Well, hello, Internet. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install and set up ZAMP on Windows 10. Now, ZAMP stands for cross-platform Apache, MySQL, PHP, and Perl, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. So what exactly am I going to cover? I'm going to show you how to install XAMPP. I'm going to show you how to configure the PHP INI files, the config INC files. I'm going to show you how to change passwords, how to create databases, how to insert data, how to create new users, how to handle privileges, how to connect to MySQL with PHP with scripts, and handling queries with PHP, as well as fixing numerous common errors. I'm going to be using Atom in this tutorial. You don't have to, but if you'd like to use exactly what I'm using, just go to atom.io and click on download, and the installation is very straightforward. Then we're going to get ZAMP. To get this, we're going to go to apachefriends.org, and you're just going to find right here where it says Windows, and click on it. Whenever you do, you're then going to come down here and click on Open. It's then going to ask you if you'd like to allow changes. Of course, click yes. Now you may get this error, which is a user account control error. And I'm going to show you how to fix that. Just click on OK. Then you're going to come down here. And if you type in mconfig, you're going to then be able to click on system configuration. You're then going to see this window pop up. And you're going to come in here and click on tools. Then you're going to search for Change UAC Settings and click on OK. Then you're going to see this window and you're just going to want to move this dial right here down to here and then click on OK. Now you're not going to have any problem installing XAMPP, so just click on Next. And I specifically put a check mark in Server, Apache, MySQL, PHP, and PHP MyAdmin. You can add the other things if you'd like, but there's no re reason for them if you're developing with PHP and MySQL. Click on Next. Leave everything as a default and click on Next. And then you're going to see this. Click on Next. And then it's going to be ready to install. Click on Next. And then all of the files are going to install. You may get this message right here. Of course, click on Allow Access. I put a check mark in both of these boxes. And then I would leave a check mark in here where it says Open the Control Panel and click on Finish. Then you're going to get a message. And you can pick your favorite flag and click on Save. And then the Control Panel is going to open up. I'm then going to search for and open my Atom text editor. You can use any text editor, it doesn't matter. I'm then specifically going to go to my XAMPP folder and PHP and click on this. This is the configuration file and click on open. And what we're specifically going to do here is just change our time zone. You can search for time zone inside of this PHP INI file that we have here. You can then find the different time zones available by going to php.net manual english time zones.php. I'm going to click on America and then I'm specifically going to use America, New York, but use whatever is, you, you know, applicable to you. I'm then going to paste in that code and save that file. Then we can open up our control panel again. Click on start next to Apache. And then if you open up localhost, it's automatically going to open the dashboard and you know that Apache is properly running. Now we want to go into our config files. And once again, this is going to be in the XAMPP directory under PHP MyAdmin. And what we want to do inside of here is set it up so that the user has to go and enter a user ID and password each time. So we're going to get rid of the root part here and where it says config, we're going to type in cookie exactly like that and then save that file. And you're going to easily be able to find this line by just typing in A-U-T-H underscore T-Y-P-E. Here is our control panel again. If you have a version of MySQL already running, what you're going to want to do is search for services and then click on this. You're then going to find MySQL and click on stop service. And now you'll be able to run both the version of MySQL you already have installed on your system as well as the one that is specific to XAMPP. Like I said, if you don't already have MySQL, this wouldn't pertain to you. And now you're going to be able to click on Start for MySQL inside of your control panel. Now if you go to localhost PHP MyAdmin, you're going to see the login. And you're going to want to type in root. And you're not currently going to have a password for root. So just leave the password part open and then click on Go. And here's PHP MyAdmin. And you're going to be able to do all kinds of things with MySQL directly inside of here. 
First thing we want to do is click right here where it says change password for root. Click on that and you're going to want to type in a password and then click on go. If you ever accidentally get logged out of the control panel, you're going to be able to find it right here where it says ZAMP and then ZAMP control is the name of the program. And you're going to be able to start and stop any of these services just by clicking start and stop. You're going to be able to find your htdocs folder, which is where you're going to have all of your PHP files that you want to show in your browser, just by going again to the ZAMP directory and htdocs. This is the index file that is going to automatically load whenever you open up localhost. And then what it specifically opens up is the dashboard, which is right here. You can open up your index.php file to see that it is directing to the dashboard folder right here. I'm going to make a copy of the index file and I'm going to create a new file called index2.php just to verify everything's working. Click on save and I'm going to type in the code that you see right here and then click on save. Then if you open up specifically localhost forward slash index2.php you can see that it served the page. Also you can go inside your control panel and click on admin and whenever you do PHP my admin is going to show up down here. Go in there and type in root with your new password and click on go. Then if you click on user accounts right here, you can see all of the accounts that you have set up. If you click on this tab right here, you're going to see that you can open up and see all of your databases as well. I'm going to create a new database. It's going to be called students. So just type in students right here and then click on create. You can see here that we're able to create tables inside of here. I have a MySQL tutorial if you don't know anything about MySQL. I'm going to call this table student and give it a total number of columns of eight. That means there's going to be eight individual pieces of data that I'm going to be storing inside of this table. Click on go. Then you're going to be able to enter in all of your information in regards that you want to store inside of here. So I have a first name, last name, street, city, state, email, phone number, and ID. This is going to be a unique identifier for each student that is stored inside of your table. Variable number of characters, that basically just means it's a string and this is the number of values expected, 25 characters, 25, 50, and so forth and so on. Your ID is going to be an integer that's going to be unsigned. And then you're going to want to click right here, which is under index, to set this as a primary key. So click on that and click primary key. Whenever you do, this is going to pop up. You can just click on go. And you're also going to want to put a check mark right here where it says auto increment. That means every time a new student is created, it's automatically going to create a new unique ID for said student. And that's all you need to set here. So click on save and you can see our table has been created for us. Now we're going to want to go and enter some information in here. I am going to use a fake student. Well, I'm sure a Chris Martinez exists somewhere. And to insert this data, you're just going to type in insert into student and all of the individual names that you gave to all the locations that you want to store information for, surrounded with parentheses, separated with commas, followed with values. And then you can throw whatever fake student inside of here. And just remember to surround everything with quotes because this is a string. After you do that, click on go. And you're going to see that all that information was entered. See right here, it says one row inserted. Now we're going to go in and create a new user account just by clicking on user accounts and then click on add user account. I'm going to call this specific user created to work with our database student db. Go and give that user a password by typing in right there. I'm then also going to say that they have the ability to select insert and update information but nothing else. And then you want to go down here to the bottom right hand corner and click on go. And you can see right here it says you've added a new user. I can then click on user accounts once again and database and it's going to have my student DB, the user that I just created. I can select that they can use the student's database and then click on go. I can also edit the privileges for that specific user as well. You can see what I have everything set for right now and then click on go. If I want this user just to be able to access the database locally, I can just click on here where it says local and localhost is going to pop up inside of there. Again, I can click on go to save that. Now I'm going to create a file that is going to allow me to connect to our MySQL database and I'm going to call it mysqli underscore connect dot php and I'm going to save it inside of my htdocs folder. 
and here is all the code and I went and locked everything in here in, in as constants and this is just your user ID this is the password you created for that specific user local host meaning it's locally hosted database name and then you use this line of code to connect to your database and then this is going to print out an error message if you were not able to connect to the database so just save that just make sure the name's the same and it's in the htdocs folder and then click on save i created another php file called testdb.php and this line of code right here is the line of code you know the uh, file that we just created that connects to the database this is a MySQL query that's going to load the first and last name from our student table. And there's only going to be one. That query is going to be executed. The response is going to be passed that information I requested. Then what I'm saying is if I received information, then what I want to do is cycle through all of the different pieces of information returned. And I want to print just the first and last name out to the screen. And then if you save it, and you go to localhost testdb.php, you can see that Chris Martinez pops back, and we know that absolutely everything is working perfectly. So I hope you found that tutorial useful, and like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.